How does the dream, your desire, you know, to be a rock star, how does that fit in there? Because it's not like, you know, when you have these bigger ideas about how you want your life to go or, you know, kind of any across time sort of thing, right? Here, these are just like, what am I going to do tonight? You know, so uh, what do I want to do tonight? That's the, these are going to be the answer to that kind of question. But, you know, what do I want to do with my life? Well, if I want to be a rock star, that's kind of like a desire, right? But it's kind of an, it's sort of overarching, right? And what it does when you've adopted something like this as your kind of goal in life is when you've adopted something like this as your goal in life, that sort of shapes all of the desires that you have right now, right? So um, suppose maybe to change my example up a little bit, um, you know, see new band, right? So if that, the reason why you promise, you know, why you want to go to the bar is because there's some new band that you've heard that's, you know, supposedly creative, they're, you know, creating a new scene, you know, well, if you want to be a rock star, that's your business, man, right? You got to, you, you need to know what's going on, uh, what people's tastes are, you know, what's, what's, what's happening, right? So, this having this as your desire for kind of how your life goes is going to do something it's going to tell you that you know when you have these competing desires you know staying home petting your cat watching some netflix doing your homework or going out to see the band well this desire helps kind of give this one more weight it tells you like oh you know well i really feel like staying home and petting the cat watching netflix whatever um but you know, you, you think, well, but I, I really should do this because this is the thing that will help me get the thing that I want overall in life, right? So in some, somehow, it's kind of making, it's giving more weight to this desire, right? And there's a bunch of different ways you can try to conceptualize this. And that's going to get us way too deep into, um, well, the details of sort of theories of autonomy, and I don't want to do that. So I want to consider what you, should, what you do when you're faced with the decision um, and you have a bunch of competing different desires. Com so one way to think of what happens when you have a bunch of competing desires about what to do tonight is you kind of think about, well, you know, this would help me with my stupid business ethics class. I could catch up on, I'm not going to date this by saying a show, but insert show there, you know, this will make my cat happy, uh, this will, you know, potentially be fun, you know, assuming the band doesn't suck, right? So when you're trying to decide which of these things to do, you have to decide sort of, wh you're not just deciding between options, you're deciding between your own desires. You're trying to decide which of these desires do you want to be the one that you act on down the road, right? So the thought here is that sometimes what we're doing is we're endorsing the desire that we have right now, okay? So it's like you're trying to decide which of these desires to act on. And then you think, well, you know, but this one is the one that really would help me out the most in my lifelong ambition to be a rock star. So what I really want to do in this situation is that one. And it's not just deciding, you know, oh, I've decided I'm going to do this. So, you know, therefore, all of these just kind of desires just go away, right? Because that's, sometimes it works that way, sometimes it doesn't, you know, um, especially when you have competing priorities. So what you're saying when you think, okay, well, I want this to be my desire, um, or I want this to be the desire that I act on, we can say that you're endorsing it, right? So you're endorsing this desire. It's not just saying that this is like, you're endorsing, when you endorse this desire, one thing you're saying is kind of like, yeah, given all these options, what I really want to do is this one, okay? That's what I really want to do. But you're also saying something like this, right? You're saying, I want to act on the desire to, right? So you're saying, I want to act on this desire, 
right? You, if you um, have a moment of weak will, right? You know, you think, yeah, I really should do this, but I'm feeling so lazy and the Netflix is right there. You know, you might, you're kind of like betraying yourself, right? So your desire to go to the bar, it gets some backup when you've kind of made this endorsement step, when you thought, okay, yeah, this is what I want to do. What's now going on is you have a second desire, right? So there's two desires here. So you've got now two desires, right? There's the desire to go to the bar, right? That's the, the desire that's getting endorsed. That's the desire you, you know, there's a bunch of things you wanted, weren't sure which one you wanted to do really. Um, you thought about it, you decided, yeah, because I have these other goals, this is the thing I want to do, okay? But when you make that decision, you now acquire a second desire, right? Which is a, this desire. I want to act on the desire to go to the bar and see the band, right? And so this is going to be something that's going to really confuse you guys probably um, when we get to talking about the CRISP article because there's a special name for these and I'm, hopefully I have enough room to write. Let's see. Yeah. So there's two kinds of desires and you're going to see this in CRISP's article. Um, and the, the distinction comes from, I'm pretty sure, from uh, Harry Frankfurt. And you're going to hear his name a few times in what follows. So there's what we call the first order desires. And then there's what's called second order desires. So the first order desires are all these, right? And the second order desire is this guy. Let's try it. I haven't used my orange pen yet. So we'll say this is the second order one. This one right there. And then these, these guys are all first order. Okay. All right. Well, how do we, what does that mean that one is first order, one is second order? Well, the answer is, this is why I came, this is why I started off this whole discussion with talking about um, beliefs and desires as propositional attitudes, right? Remember I said that the thing that makes these kinds of things the, the mental states that they are is the, the sentence that they're aimed at, right? The, the proposition that they're aimed at. So this is a belief because it's the, the thinking that this sentence is true. This is a desire because it's the wanting this sentence to be true, okay? So we're going to make the distinction between the two different kinds of desires in the same way, right? Um, it's pretty, it's one of those things that's going to be so simple, it's actually confusing. Um, so bear with me, right? Again, these are all the first, this is the second. And if you look at it, you can kind of see what the difference is, right? So here, the second order desire, it has as its object, the thing that it's pointed at, right? Another desire, okay? This is actually technically a second order volition, but don't worry about it. Just all you have to think about right now is uh, the fact that there's another desire that is the object of that desire.